All right, so in this video, I'm just going to talk about the basics of an element or a section tactics in aerial combat. Now, just to recap, an element or a section usually refers to a pair of fighters working together. There are some doctrines where it involves three fighters, but for the purposes of this video, we're just going to assume it means two. So I've got a short clip here of an opening engagement where it's a four on two basically. We have a four man stack of P47s and we're up against a Spitfire Mark 14 and a 190D9. We're the highest aircraft currently and it's our job to knock these guys out so that we can mop up and you know just take out the rest of the team in our own time because we're flying P47s. It's a four, four man P47 squad. Now, what you're going to see here is two different sections try and work together, but only one of them succeeds successfully and the other just gets lucky. In order for a pair of fighters to work is that they have to be close enough to lend support, okay? But they also need to have enough space so that they can maneuver and defend themselves when necessary. So as you can see here, I'm the yellow fighter off to the right and to the left is my wingman flank. Now, moving into this situation here, I called up the play that we're going to split into two pairs each, and we're both going to take one of these fighters. So me and Flank are taking on the Spitfire. And if we look off to the left here, you can see Pap down there slightly, and Lieutenant Dan off to the high left. So I've told Pap and Dan here to go after the D9 over there. And me and Flank are going after the Spitfire over here. I'm going to run through it twice. First, I'll show me and Flank how we deal with the Spitfire. And then I'll show how Pap and Dan deal with the 190. So as you can see, we're in a combat spread formation. Actually, not really. I'm in the right echelon here because I'm slightly behind Flank. As we turn into the Spitfire here, the Spitfire chooses not to commit and turn into us. Instead, he decides to go off to, at an angle and we approach him at 90 degrees. I think he was trying to like bait us in so that we would commit into a full turn fight. But as you can see, in terms of speed, he doesn't have this option. We are almost, well, we're about 50 kilometers an hour faster than he is. So that kind of play that he wants to, to execute here, it's not going to work because we can immediately, once we realize if he is trying to bait us into a turn fight, we're just going to break off and run away and there's nothing you can do about it. So coming into this turn here, instead of doing a bracket, which we would do if he's going to turn in and try and engage us, right now Flank has the lead, so I communicate with him over the comms. I'm going to follow him, he's the leader, and I'm just going to stay behind him. And it's my job now is the the free fighter to scan around the area to make sure that we're not going to get jumped by anybody else and to also position myself to attack the bandit here in case flank misses. So we go in here, Spitfire now tries to turn in to try bait us in. Flank takes a shot, misses. I take a shot and get a hit. We're just going to ignore the blueberry here because they usually don't really do much and he misses shots anyway. And as you can see here, once the Spitfire turns into this hard maneuver. I'm not going to commit to the turn. He, This is what he wants me to do. He wants me to continue my left turn down and then he'll be able to get shots on me again. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to follow the exit route that Flank has taken here, which is just basically going in a straight line and then starting into a vertical maneuver. So Flank goes up. I pull up under him. And now I'm shadowing him from behind. And what happens here is it's hard to see in the tactical view, but the Spitfire is looking right at me. And as you can see, as his flight path, once Flank gets into attack here, he actually doesn't even look at Flank. Now, I'm not too sure why, probably was a big skill issue, but it could just be that he, he just completely lost sight of Flank when going up in the, the vertical, which to be honest, uh, you shouldn't be able because there's nobody else here. So he's pushing out here. And this is why, as you can see, I've started separating a lot from Flank here. I'm about a kilometer behind him and I'm not turning in to maneuver into him. 
the reason being is that if I do fully commit to a turn here, assuming flank isn't here, if I did full commit to that, I would just end up in a head-on with the, the Spitfire. So instead, I'm just taking a low, lazy left turn off to the left here. And yeah, Spitfire gets smoked there. He loses a wing, he gets clipped, and we're done. That's it. At no point in this fight right here was... I or flank in a situation where we were in like a big immediate danger. It just did not happen. We played to the strengths of our aircraft. We didn't play into the game that the Spitfire wanted us to play. And that was it. They were done. Okay, so now we rewinded the replay. And we're going to take a look at the other section. How they deal with the 190. So straight off the bat, the problem here is that after I've given the command that I was going to assign both Pap and Dan to attack the 190, they are already out of position. So Dan is about 1.4 away, I think close to 2 kilometers away from Pap. Now Dan is playing uh, the normal game where you just go straight for altitude, which is usually the right play. You In the 47 especially, you need your altitude advantage, otherwise you get into a lot of very difficult positions. The problem is, is that when you start flying with a squad, is that the dynamics change slightly. In order for element section, element tactics or section tactics to work, it does require you to pretty much be close to perfect in terms of your maneuvers in relation to each fighter. And that also includes your positions in relation to each fighter. If you don't play it like textbook, then it doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, then everyone just gets killed. And of course, the flip side to this is that if you do play it close to perfect, then you achieve results that no one else can really pull off. Especially in a situation like this, once you have uh, fighters that are working together and communicating together, you basically ha have no real opposition because in War Thunder, nobody plays as a team. <laughs> so just by taking the initiative to try to play as a team, you already have a significant advantage. But it does require you to understand all the tactics and all the maneuvers in order for it to work. So we have Pap down here that is, see is slightly above the 190. Lieutenant Dan is way up above both Pap and the 190. And so Pap's going to go in here. Now a problem that happens here is that there's zero communication going on. Both me and Flank, once the fight begins, we're constantly talking. Even if we're not doing anything, we just say something so that everyone knows like, I'm still there, I'm behind, how far. Uh, keeping a look around, just saying that nobody else is coming. That's, that's the sort of thing that needs to happen. In this fight here, what happens is that there's basically zero communication that happens. So, Pap is just going in here like he normally would, and he's just assuming that things are going to go the way things go before, which is usually I'm his wingman, and so he's going to custom to how I play. So he just stays behind me and does what I what I tell him to do. But you can't do that when you're playing with new players. So in this situation here, Pap just goes in straight and then he passes the 190 on his far right, merges with him, and then turns in here. Now the problem with this is that it is quite dangerous. The 190 didn't try and pitch up for a hit-on attack, which could have happened, in which case then it comes down to the pilot to be able to defend himself and merge. And Pap, not being the most experienced in our squadron, could have easily died to that. And if he had died to that, it would have been a death for no gain. Because Lieutenant Dan is all the way up there. So that's what could have happened. And what happens here now, as you can see, is Pap is trying to turn in behind. The 190 pitches up and tries to bait in a head-on for Lieutenant Dan. But Dan doesn't accept it and it just goes off up, which is the correct play that he needs to put here. Because as you can see, Pap is completely out of position to take any kind of good shots here. So what has happened is that the 190 has basically had two 1v1 opportunities. He had the first one-on-one -on -one engagement when he was trying to joust there with Pap but didn't take it. And the second one here where he tried to pitch up for Lieutenant Dan. And this is what you want to avoid because right now you don't have two P-47s working together. You have two P-47s trying to jockey for their own position to try shoot the 190. And basically that means the 190 is kind of only have the switch between one 1v1 and then once he maneuvers out of it, another 1v1 starts, which isn't what you want to happen. You want two P-47s to engage the 190 together 
by working together. Now, in this fight here, nothing bad really happens. The ten again, the ten then goes straight into vertical and loops back over. Pap is trying to chase the 190 now, coming in from behind low. I think he gets a shot, yeah. So Pap manages to get some shots off here, and now he's forcing the 190 down to the deck. It's at this point that a wyvern enters the play from the top left here, and Lieutenant Dan is now in a good position to move in to the wyvern and make sure the wyvern doesn't pursue Pat. So you can see here that it it kind of worked out into the advantage because if both of uh, the fighters had stayed on the 190, the wyvern would have come in slightly at a slight altitude advantage and might have been able to make a play, but. It defeats the purpose of trying to fight together as a team and it, as i mentioned earlier there are two points in this fight right here where things could have gone really wrong really fast so pamp chases the 190 down to the deck and he manages to get the kill uh, lieutenant dan i think gets a couple of hits into the wyvern here and he'll get the wyvern eventually and here you can see me and flank were coming in back from our fight as you can see this fight here that happened uh, much more prolonged engagement because there wasn't any real communication or teamwork going on. Whereas on the other side of the fight, we're already, we've already uh, nailed the Spitfire and we're coming in over here to help them out. So yeah, that, that pretty much wraps it up here. The Wyvern's about to go down and so was the, so was the 190. But hopefully this video has sort of shown what element tactics sort of looks like and how it's supposed to play out and the kind of steps and maneuvers that you have to take in order for it to work otherwise it just doesn't work and you're just going to be wasting your time